All right, uh, you guys just finished up the measurement lab, and um, it was probably our first real challenging lab because of the equipment and first time working with some of these pieces of equipment. So let's talk about what we should have seen. So to start with, um, you were asked to take a crayon, some clay, and a wooden stick, and you were asked to use this device. And we talked about this device and how this is called a triple beam balance. So triple beam balance. And we said that this measures everything in grams. All right, so all of our measurements are going to be in grams. And you can see here there's a ones, and back here is a tens, and here is a hundred uh, grams. And we said that there's a little zero that's on the line here. And our goal is to put the items onto the base of the triple beam balance and then adjust the weight, getting it to zero. And that was our weight, and you were asked to record data. So you can see in this example, um, someone has clay that is up there. And so uh, that was the first thing that you needed to do, was to measure the mass of the wooden stick, the clay, and the crayon. After you finished that, um, you were asked to measure the volume of the uh, clay, crayon, and wooden stick. And we talked about how for the clay, because of the fact that it was thicker and it wasn't going to fit into the graduated cylinder, which I'll show you in a second, um, we used a beaker. And so we used a beaker for this one. And this measures milliliters. And so what we had to do was learn that there are little markings that are on the side. And we had to look and say that water is about halfway up. So if it was between 100 and 150, um, these are milliliters. So if it was halfway between there, we'd say that it was um, at about 125 milliliters. Um, and then you'd have to calculate out what the volume change was. And we gave you a formula that said it was the new volume subtracted by the original volume. And when you subtracted those out, that gave you the volume of the object. Okay, so um, that was how you calculated out the volume. You took the new amount, so if it went up to 125 milliliters and it started off at 100, we'd say that it was a 25 milliliter uh, change, or the water is displaced 125 or 25 milliliters. So all you're doing is taking new volume, subtracting from original volume. So if we do that example real quick, um, over here we would say that our new volume is at 125 milliliters and we're going to subtract it from the original amount which was at 100 milliliters it would end up being 25 milliliters of volume change okay so that was the second step that you had to do and as I said you would use the beaker for the clay but if you look up here this guy is called a graduated cylinder and you use the graduated cylinder uh, to for the crayon and um, the wooden stick and that one had a little bit more specific measurements because um, there were little markings all the way up and so we used this one um, for smaller objects when we had to use the clay we used the bigger one so you still use the same formula for volume here you had to take the new volume amount subtract it from the original amount so at this point in time, you would have had a mass and you would have had a volume for all three items. And as you were doing that, you needed to make sure that you were recording down the data. And so you can see here's an example of one of our students measuring and recording um, data. So you can see that he has um, the mass, the volume, and eventually we'll talk about the density, but he was recording all of those down. So after you had gone through and measured the wooden stick, the crayon, and the clay, the mass, and the volume, you were asked to <clears throat> calculate out the density. And what we did is we gave the formula for this 
to you. So what you had to do is take the mass of the object, divide it by the volume, and that gave the density. So density's definition is the amount of mass per amount of volume. So what that really means is that if we have a graduated cylinder, we'll make that look like this, and so um, imagine that you have water that's in here, and the mass of the object is at 1.0 grams, and when you um, put the object in, and it goes up 1 milliliter, so imagine that it goes up 1.0 milliliters. We would take this and enter these numbers into our equation. So the mass would be 1.0 grams divided by the milliliters, which are going to go here for volume. And so our volume is going to be 1.0 milliliters. And when we do that, it is going to be equal to 1, which is going to result in 1 point zero grams per milliliter so what that means is that for every one gram it is going to displace the water one milliliter upward so we could ask the same question well what would happen if we had seven grams knowing our information that we now know is that for every seven grams it would displace the water seven milliliters upward so using this formula um, we can also start to figure out if something is going to float or it's going to sink. So usually the rule of thumb is that it, if, it, if it is 1.0 uh, grams per milliliter or higher, it is going to sink. If it is less than 1.0 grams per milliliter, it is going to float. And so we can kind of determine some information based on that. So after you finished all of that calculating and um, those measurements, you were then asked to go back to the original uh, wooden stick and um, the crayon and the clay. We said we were done with the wooden stick because uh, we didn't want to break that and destroy it. Um, however, for the crayon, we said that you could break it into a part one or a part A and a part two or a part B. So this is an example of a student that broke it in half and they are going to eventually put it back up onto the scale there and measure it out and when they're done with that they're going to put it into the graduated cylinder to calculate out what its volume is and then they will be able to use the density formula to calculate out the um, density for this one piece of the crayon then what they're going to do is they're going to use part number two or part b and they're going to measure out the mass of it, they're going to get the volume of it, and afterwards they're going to calculate out the density, and then they're going to do the same thing for the clay. So here's an example of a student that actually was measuring out the clay in the beaker. And so the whole time they are recording all of their data down, so that way they can have a nice chart, so that way we can talk about it in class. After all of this was done, um, there were uh, four questions that the students had to work on. Um, those questions, the first one was asking uh, for the students to determine which had the greatest mass. Um, so the greatest one that had uh, the largest mass was the clay. So hopefully you discovered that the clay had the greatest mass. The least mass went to the wooden stick. So the wooden stick then had the least amount, uh, least mass. So that was the first question that the kids had to do. Um, the second thing that you guys had to do was to um, determine uh, a relationship between um, the mass and the density. And so what you should have discovered is that um, the larger the mass, so the larger the mass, 
the greater the water um, changed or more scientifically displaced which then resulted in um, a greater density So that was the second one. Uh, third one asked for us to um, determine uh, if you were going to do something differently to the lab. Uh, one of the things that you might have wanted to do was to, um, you know, take other objects other than the ones that I provided you for, with, or you might have wanted to break the clay down into smaller pieces, um, but basically any type of change that you wanted to make. So this one is your answer. And the final question that you needed to do was to um, determine if you dried the item, um, the items before you uh, measured them again and redid the experiment. So for example, the clay, um, if you didn't dry off the clay, would that be, uh, would that affect your results? The answer is yes. Um, and then most of you discovered that uh, the clay held water inside of it. Uh, this resulted in larger masses and volume change. So obviously, if you didn't try the clay, it held some water, which is going to skew the results. Um, so that's the lab, uh, learning how to measure mass, um, figure out volume, and calculate out density. So take a couple minutes, respond to the two questions below, the multiple choice, um, or the select your answer, and then um, the short response. All right, see you in class.